And so folks, we have arrived at the X30XE, the engine I put in my Reliance Scimitar. It is the best V6 engine, mostly because it comes with a manual gearbox on the back of it. And that makes it very much easier than the Cosworth, the Alpha, the Jag, the list goes on. There's loads of great V6 engines out there. But this one has a rear drive gearbox with a separate gear linkage, not a stick built into the gearbox. Uh, so it's fantastic for transplants. It makes loads of power at the box. And with a little tuning, uh, you can see I've got mine up to north of 260 horsepower. Let's get into how I put it in the car. These are the photos I took excitedly after getting the engine out of the N Omega, uh, Vauxhall Omega. You can see it's got a front sump arrangement, so the Omega cross member is uh, underneath the back half of the engine. Um, of course, the scimitar front cross member between, directly between the front wheels is, is in front of the front pulley. The engine is way further back in the scimitar than it is in the Omega, which is, which is wonderful. But it gives me a problem that that sump fouls just on the um, cross member. So I got hold of the Vauxhall Vectra V6 sump, uh, which is a much more normal looking thing rather than this uh, winged affair. Uh, and it has a sump, I forget if it's central or rear, but it, it certainly clears the cross member. So I had to make these engine mounts. You can see I left the chassis rails completely blank. I cut the old Essex ones off when I was doing the chassis work. Uh, so I took the gearbox mount from the original Scimitar cross member. Yeah, you can see here and chopped it about a bit uh, to make it fit the Omega one. Uh, gear selected separate from the box so you can shorten it. Chop the thing down a couple of inches and that had the gear stick coming out of the um, into the car interior in the right place. Put the accelerator pedal from the Omega on the side of the brake pedal assembly and then to the left of it is the Omega clutch pedal assembly. So I've chopped the clutch pedal itself about a bit and made it so it might in the car. I was very keen to keep the plastic clutch master cylinder because obviously um, they don't degrade inside. Now you can see it's tight but I could squeeze it next to the brake booster keeping everything completely original. And then I've put the Omega pedal rubbers on all three. I used a Honda clutch reservoir of a Honda something Civic or something like that uh, and I've mounted it there in a, in a clamp as you can see. Uh, so that is the clutch complete. So I took the back end of the scimitar prop shaft and the front end of the Omega prop shaft to a company called PropTech and they made me this but they did have to in fact make the entire front end because the um, Omega arrangement just had a rubber donut it didn't have a UJ at all so they had to make up this UJ and this mounting plate so that's the engine in and all the physical controls uh, connected here is a graph of the gearing of the old Essex engine with the T5 gearbox and the new Omega engine with the Omega gearbox so you can see I've actually managed to get the same top speed RPM, but it's uh, got a shorter first gear, so it really punches through first gear very rapidly, especially with obviously double the torque. And then the other cool thing about it is you can see it'll do 62 miles an hour in the top of second gear, so that's with the rev limiter as I said it. So the car will do a 0 to 60 in, in only first and second gear, requiring only one gear change, which makes it a very quick 0 to 60. So yeah, I was very pleased with the gearing, this means I could stick with the standard the diff ratio the car had and the tyre sizes I selected, and it actually worked out to be almost exactly the same gearing as the Omega, that is for road speed for RPM. You can see in the lower half of this shot, this is a engine re rebreather, crankcase recirculation, uh, if you like, arrangement. I think it's a separator. Um, oil can drip back into the block and the gases can come up into the back of the inlet manifold. Um, but as you can see, it sticks out, it's a little difficult to see, it sticks out further than the back of the crankcase. Um, so this was something I was keen to change so that I could get the engine as far back as I as I could. So I remodelled that and chopped it about a bit here. You can see that I can make a pattern out of steel, which can bolt down to the same location with a bit of sealant. And then I made this um, horrendous little thing that looks like a ship, <laughs> but it's worked perfectly. Under low throttle conditions, you don't get much blow by. So that small pipe that is fitted suffices, and that goes into the inlet manifold directly behind the throttle body. And then the two larger pipes get rid of the engine blow by under high throttle conditions. So you can see there's the two pipes there on the part I've created and the two on the outside of the plastic fitting on the manifold. Those go all the way forward to in front of the throttle. So the system operates when at full throttle. There's a partial vacuum, then it pulls the gas through from the crankcase. And of course, there's a lot more gas generated in the crankcase because you're under high load. Uh, so that's that whole system. And here's the other pipe that was stuck way out the back of the engine. Uh, you can see that's good. It's like getting off a six inches behind the crankcase right above the bell housing so it's a terrible place for that water rail to be um, in order to get the engine in as far back as you can so i chopped that about a bit and uh, welded it here you can see the part i made and here it is fitted you can see um, the difference in um, in distance so i'm able to get that pipe closer to the engine 
back of the head if you like because i've made that other part which you can see nestled away there uh, and as you see it's a lot lot um it's a good several inches i can get that thing closer to the bulkhead of the scimitar now so that work was done before i even tried offering it in obviously the engine has to pass an mot and the uh, emissions rules at the time were just a visual check is it smoky or not so there was no need for any egr um, adding complexity weight and and of course reducing performance so i've made a little egr blank the plumbing was relatively simple. The two small hoses go to the heater matrix were easily done. You can see I've got LPG in here as well, but that's not used anymore. And that's been removed. And um, the top hose was nice and simple. The bottom hose took a bit of a route around the power steering rack, but um, otherwise, yeah, pretty easy to connect up with a selection of old hoses I've had from previous car projects. So at this point, we've got the whole thing plumbed in, all controls fitted, and um, a few adaptations I've shown you. I'm going to leave it there. In the next video, I'll go into, well, I think we might even do all the performance tuning, of which there's quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to showing you how I made this engine perform a lot better. Tune in again. I hope you're enjoying this so far.